So Wanix server, oh, the high-speed NVMe NAS that all our editors use to edit 4K, 8K video and the like, it's completely full. Newton server, the mechanical-based vault where we store all our old projects, that's completely full too. And to make matters worse, our new red weapon camera capable of recording footage at a whopping 8K resolution is also here and capable of filling up its one terabyte megs at a rate of up to 300 megabytes per second. Yes, a three second clip that could be as much as one gig. Fortunately, Seagate, oh, there go the rails. You might say this project's gotten off the rails already. Fortunately, Seagate and 45 Drives have partnered up with us, which means they gave us hardware uh, to solve this problem once and for all. Today, uh, we are installing a petabyte of storage in our freshly renovated server room. So come along for the ride. Browse privately and securely with TunnelBear, the simple VPN app. Try TunnelBear for free at the link in the video description. Hey, guys, so would it be a problem if I shut down the vault for a couple hours? The vault? Could I shut that down for a couple hours? Uh, I don't think I need it right now. Lock it down. We good? We Throw cool? away the key. Burn it. Burn it. Don't no. Burn it onto no. a CD. No. <laughs> yeah, okay, why do I even talk to you people? Can you burn it onto a compact yeah. disc? Burn it onto a CD. You brought more RAM. Yeah. I like this guy. So I guess now's a good opportunity to introduce our friends from 45 Drive. So this is Brett Kelly, who is, what, what exactly? I'm an electrical engineer. Okay. By education. And I've been well, doing just a little bit of everything since I got to 45 Drives. And then this is Nicole, whose last name I forget. Morrison. <laughs> Morrison. Yes. Oh, I'm glad you got it. Yeah. I look after the marketing. Okay. So here we go. I did manage to at least open the top of the box. That is as far as I got. Yeah, as far as um, uh, look at that documentation that I ruined. Okay. So you guys have made some significant changes to the Storinator since the last time that I got my hands on one. Yes. Now it has a screen. It has a screen. Oh, no, I'm not doing that. That's yours. Okay, I got this. Oh, yes. It's stuck. It's stuck. There you go. Yes! <laughs> Let's see what happens if I unscrew these without... Uh... Hey, that good was fun. catch. Hey, I drop things all the time. I gotta be good at catching them. <laughs> so now you guys have like a toolless mechanism for the drives now instead that of that. Correct. Well, it was toolless before, but it was kind of like a dumb toolless. Yep. Now it's like a really smart toolless. Cool, so it's yeah, like it a friction mount. And in terms of, oh, wow, it looks like it did get a little bit wanged in shipping there. Look at that. I guess we might just have to take a hammer to it. Nervous chuckles. <laughs> uh... Linus, can you not hammer our expensive server machine? Well, now you can do yeah, whatever you want now. to it now. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so what's in here? So we've got our two rocket carts, Rocket 750 made by High Point. Yep. And they, uh, and they connect on to the LCD screen there. We have a two-port Intel 10 gigabit NIC, um, RJ45 copper. Okay. 64 gigs of RAM, soon to be 128. And a much more high efficient power supply than the one you had last time. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'll find, I'll find the rest of them. Sorry, what's in your boot? Uh, a couple of screws fell into my boot. So with our introductions and the unboxing out of the way, it's time for the most exciting part. 
inventory time. So you might actually be wondering why we need so much RAM, and the answer to that question is, Brett on his way over here stopped and doubled up our memory because basically ZFS, as you add more and more storage to it, and we're gonna be putting about 400 terabytes of storage in each of these boxes, uses RAM as sort of like a, 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 like a map to where the data is. So that's why all of a sudden we went from 64 gigs being perfectly acceptable to really wanting 128 gigs. So we're gonna have that much in each of our systems. Oh, did you cut yourself? Yes. Oh, that's, uh, that happened fast. We've already uh, got first blood yeah, here. Already an injury. <laughs> nice. A nice knuckle one too, so it's always an awkward band-aid, right? Oh man, and it takes forever to heal. I know, I was going, ah, it'll go away, I'll, it'll go away, no. See, this is why techies don't like sharing their screwdrivers. I'm putting these screws in by hand. Well, this guy over here, yeah, you know what? No, fine, no, just keep it, just keep it, just keep it. Oh crap. Oh damn it, I can't even find it. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yay. <laughs> okay, so this sucks. There's some shipping damage on our server, so we're gonna have to fix that before we go move to the fun part of loading it into the server rack. It's like I'm sure proto cases like metalworking engineers are rolling in their graves. They're not even dead yet, they're rolling in their graves watching me work on metal. Does that not look pretty pretty straight right there? Yeah, that's right. See, I may not be good at doing things properly, but I'm good at doing things the crappy way. Now you might be thinking to yourself, gee Linus, this server sure doesn't have a lot of hard drives in it. To which I would reply, baby, I am the hard drive. And then everyone would groan and cringe and all that. And then I would give you the real response, which is, we're not ready to put the hard drives in yet because these XL60 storinators can weigh freaking what? Like 100 pounds probably with 60 drives in them? Yeah, you, you, do, you do not want to move these around full. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the drives once they're already on the rails. Okay. Well, we switched jobs this time, right? I was defeated before. Then. Were you? Yeah. Oh, I didn't notice. Oh, here, yeah, yeah I that can do that part. Sense. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Yep, we're working this snake together. <laughs> See, it didn't feel dirty until I said that, did it? <laughs> so yeah, so you pull and I feed. There we go. Oh, I get how this works. Wait, no, that's no, not right. No, no, no. no. no, no. What's going on we're here? We're doing this backwards. This is my end, are you sure? I know what the problem is. It goes this way. Brilliant. Okay, and now we've got it backwards. You were the fuller. There we go. There. I'm glad we got this sorted out. I mean, I'd have... Keeping them all straight though, it's way easier this time. I'd have hated for this to get embarrassing. When you're me, you gotta learn to be real good at catching. Okay, this is starting to worry me now a little bit. This water-cooled server has to move to the bottom of the rack in the event that there's a leak, the last thing we want it to do is nuke $50,000 worth of enterprise grade Seagate hard drives, not to mention the storinators. I actually want to move these existing storinators up to put Petabyte Project at the very bottom. Networking cables here, heavy hard drives here. Cause I like them bottom heavy, baby. You've seen my wife, I clearly don't like them top heavy. Good? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm good. So he thinks he's here to install Petabyte Project. He's actually just helping me do server room maintenance. <laughs> so, take it I got this team. side, yeah, I I'll got as much of this side as I can. Cool. Look at that. That's not so bad. Good. Server room crap with Linus and Brett. Use the bottom server as a shelf for the top server. No problem. So, update time. We have Delta 1 and Delta 2 servers deployed. We've got our network configuration all set up. We're running CentOS. And it is time now to load in one petabyte of hard drives.
Oh! You know what? Let's just take one box at a time. First ride's going in. Here it goes. Oh, that's a tight fit there. There we go. Oh, it's in. Okay, so now we just gotta do that uh, 97 more times. Here we go. I guess it gets less exciting after the uh, first couple. Yeah. Really, I turned my back for like five seconds. I brought the whole system. Five down. seconds. Okay, let's just let's down. just get this stupid thing out of here. I'll figure out how to get it taped on there properly properly later. Okay. Okay. So hold on. Let's go all the way back. Let's start at the beginning. Okay. So all the drives are in. We're ready to fire it up. So first, we take our hard drives and we separate them into VDEVs. That's correct. Then we take those VDEVs and we combine them into ZFS pools. Yeah, and the beautiful thing is it's all one command. It does it for us. We just tell it what we want to build. Okay, then we take those pools and we divide them up into bricks. You got it. And then bricks we use to build up our GlusterFS cluster file system. You got it. So Gluster handles the scaling? The ZFS layer handles the device failure, all that fun stuff. So with Gluster then, we could add more storinators to have more than a petabyte of data, or we could add two more identical storinators and we could have redundancy. Yep. Okay, let's get started. So it looks like we might have a bunk drive. Okay, so we found the device that's spitting out errors. It's this guy right here. So what we're gonna do, just a basic troubleshooting step is we're gonna swap it with a drive that is working. Vice SDAQ again. So that's the slot. Bad cable would be bad. Bad cable would be bad. That'd be really bad. But our, like that is our farthest off chance. So you're thinking card right now. Card. It turns out I don't have the right cards here to throw in a replacement if the card is bad. But honestly, that to me looks not as much like a card issue and more like a, a connection issue. So what we haven't tried yet is just a simple unplug and plug back in at the HBA level. Yeah, so it's gonna be... Well, should I just pop them all and pop them all back in or... Oh no, you know which one it is? Yeah. Okay. We got it. it SDAQ is back. So the solution was we actually have a port on the card that was kind of bunk. But the good news is these are what? Uh, 10 port cards. 10 ports. So these are 40 drive cards. So we moved everything over one. Everything's up and running. We're ready to rock. Yep, you got it. Okay. Whew. One little uh, thing we have to do. I thought for a minute there, Seagate was gonna have a bad drive in their sponsored video, or 45 Drives was gonna have a bad port on their, on their case in their sponsored video. Wouldn't that have been funny? Yeah, hilarious. Yeah! <laughs> it wrote at 3.8 gigabytes a second. 3.8 gigabytes per second. Check that out. Count all the places, kids. Three billion, 802 million, 232 kilobytes per second. Windows reports, even after all the space lost to ZFS, to redundancy, to Gluster, to uh, solar flares, 778 terabytes of storage. So we have effectively more than quadrupled the old space on the vault, which by the way, was like super done, like super duper done for. Here's a file move test file, there we go. There's a 10 gigabyte file. Oh, yeah, baby. baby, those are spinners. So let's read off it back to a uh, back to a hardware raider it. You ready? So we're reading at a consistent one gigabyte per second. Absolutely gorgeous. So there you have it. We're all done. Petabyte project is complete. III's TMA2 modular headphone system lets you create your own headphones and offers more than a thousand configurations. 
How do you choose? Well, they're launching TMA2 Discovery, an interactive music-driven experience that's integrated as a special page on their website and that's designed to guide users to the right headphone configuration. It's based on data from Spotify's Discover Weekly playlist, and it's a roundup of recommended songs chosen for you, tailored to your tastes and based on your listening habits. III then recommends you the right TMA2 configuration based on this. And to celebrate this exciting new launch, III is hosting a giveaway. So try the new discovery feature at the link below and screenshot your selected TMA2 config, post it to Instagram using hashtag TMA2Discovery and you will get a chance to win. So all that's left then now is a huge thank you to Seagate for providing their petabyte worth of drives and to 45 drives in particular, thank Brett. Thank you very much for coming out. Uh, and a thank you to you guys for watching. If you guys dislike this video, you can hit that button, but come on. If you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed, maybe consider out checking more of out, or wait, what, what do I, links in the video description, right? Where to buy the stuff we featured at Amazon or over at 45drives.com, depending on what you're into. And also down there, we've got our merch store where you can buy cool shirts like this one, as well as our community forum, which you should totally join. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to do next. So why don't you leave a comment under the video with what Brett and I did wrong? Can't wait uh, to read them. I'm just kidding. You, you guys already did that. Okay, you know what, Brett, 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 Brett. I actually just had a really good idea. Oh, I don't no really way. need this KVM anymore. So now your boss doesn't have to buy you one. Thank you for coming out. It works reasonably well. Not as well as my new one, but. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> you're, this, you're very is, welcome. So I guess that's how it works. We just, we trade a petabyte for a used KVM switch. That's right. Eight you're the ports. greatest person ever. Eight ports, VGA, VGA. I'll get you some cables too. I don't think I can give you all eight cables though. And I got plenty of cables. Oh, you do? Yeah, no. No, no, they're proprietary. Oh. Yeah, I'll give you a couple.